of peace. This is another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, so unless anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do give, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the Day of Judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the uh, room, to the saints that are watching in on the camera, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live and live everlasting. Let's open up to uh, John chapter 7, verse 14. This is John chapter 7, verse 14. What did they say? God's promise what? When? You need comfort? You need assistance of salvation, assurance of salvation? Sheesh. Who put this book together? We should write our own. For real, all the commentary, you know what I'm saying? I ain't doing no commentary, but, you know what I'm saying, we should, like, we should, like, work on the Bible, like, and put, like, the, the King James and it, put it in plain language, and, you know what I'm saying? And then put the cross-references under every Cross-references, yeah. yeah. That'd be that nice. thing's like way long to doing that. Super long. You know I kind of gave up. I was doing it with Matthew, and then I just gave up in the middle of that thing, like, Phew. We could do it, though. Goodness. You know what I'm saying? Like, take it a book, it'd probably take it, like, five years. You know what I'm saying? But we just took, like, a book out at a time and then, like, read over each other word just to make sure, you know what I'm saying, thing makes sense. You know what I'm saying? We can do that thing. I just want to keep it like the King James, though. Except for the stuff that, you know, King James made a mistake on, on translating. See? I got an idea right there live one day. God, God, God willing, that thing happen. This is uh, John chapter 7, verse 14. Now about the midst of the feast, Yahushua went up to the temple and now taught. A GoFundMe. Yeah, we're going to do a GoFundMe. Pay us. We'll do it. This is uh, John chapter 7, verse 14. He said about the, about the time of the feast, he went up and he is up there teaching. Yahushua went up in the temple and taught. Uh-huh. And the Jews marveled, saying, how is our people? When they say Jews, they're talking about our people. So our people, they start marveling. They're looking at what happened. How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? All right, when they say letters, they're talking about the books. Right, same thing we read. They're talking, talking about the, the paper scriptures, the rolls that they had. They're like, how in the world does this man know the letters? And he didn't, like, who are you learning from? He didn't go to school. He didn't go to seminary. Who is this guy? Right, let's hear about it. And y'all sure answered him and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Okay. If any man do... If any man will do his will, he shall know the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. It's important what he said just now. He said, if any man will do his will, talking about the Most High God, right? he said, if any man will do his will, he'll understand the doctrine that I'm teaching, whether it's from me or whether it's from God. If it's something I just came up with out of the blue or if it's something that's true. The reason why we have a tough time understanding false doctrine and recognizing if it's false or not is because we're not obeying the word. We're not walking in God's will. So the little stuff that he do give us that we do understand, we don't count it important enough to follow after it. So then when something, something else come along, he allows us to be fooled by lies, and he allows us to, 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 uh, to ignore the truth. And that puts us in a very tight position. That's why we come here every week. That's why we want to try to get our understanding. That's why we want to try to continue to walk orderly in the conduct that the Most High God calls for. That's the only way to get there. People always ask, how do you understand the book? It's the only way to understand the book is obey what you understand. That's it. Anything else, you're just making a fool out of yourself. You ain't gonna, if you ain't going to obey it, you're just making a fool out of yourself. You end up starting your own little church. You know what I'm saying? Coming up with a new denomination. That's what it's about. That's how you get the divisions. That's how you get a bunch of people believing they're doing the right thing, but doing totally different things. Believing they're worshiping the same God, but doing totally different things fighting one another. A lot of these wars, all this stuff, all this stuff, religion, they all claim they are worshiping the same God. You got Christians going up against Muslims for, for, for 
thousands of years this has been happening. Christians going up against Muslims. Or hundreds of years, I guess. Right? <clears throat> right? You got these people going up against each other, and you let them tell it, they worshiping the same God. Right? The the people tell you tell you Allah is the God of God of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Christian gonna tell you that that Jehovah is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let them tell you they worshiping the same darn God, and all of them going different directions. Right? You let these fake Jewish people. You let them tell it they worshiping the God of Abraham, Yahweh. Right? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Same thing. All of them doing something different. You ain't even gotta go too far. You talk about just Christians. Right? The Pentecostal do it one way. Right? The Mormons do it another way. The Seventh-day Adventists do it another way. All of them do it different. All of them worshiping the same Jesus. Right? Not just the same God. I mean, particular down to the same Jesus. Reading from the same darn book. And they come to a different conclusion. That's why we have to understand we have to walk orderly in the conduct that he's given us. If we do his will, we'll understand whether the doctrine is true or not. Right? That's book. That's promise. Right, that's what we have to walk in. Let's start off where, where we left off somewhat at least. Acts chapter 23, verse 11. You want to pick up Acts chapter 23, verse 11. When we left off, Paul, you know, he fell into a peril. Remember, he went, in that, he went, uh, went into Acts chapter 21, I think. Um, he went in there, and they was already warning him, like, yo, man, when you go over there, when you go back to Jerusalem, they're going to tie that butt up. They're going to bound you. You're going to get put in jail, in other words. Right? And so he went. And everything seemed to be cool for a minute. James gave him some advice. Like, man, let these people know where you're from, man. You know, all these people, they be thinking, you know what I'm saying, that you're teaching against our tradition. And like, man, make these people, let these people know where you're from. All right, go ahead and take on these vows. So he took on the vows. He was about to do a do. They called him at the temple. They are like, man, he brought a Gentile into the temple. You know what I'm saying? Paul, look, I ain't bring no Gentile into no temple. Y'all ain't never even seen me about no temple. What y'all talking about? All right? But they gaffled him up, put him together. They started beating him up. You know what I'm saying? And the... Then the the the, the uh, like a guardian, a centurion, he came and he he had to stop everything from happening. He was like, hold on, hold on, what's going on here? Right? Paul started to speak to him. He found out Paul was a Roman. Right? He 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 is a Jew. Right? He is a Hebrew. But at the same time, he was a Roman. He was a Roman citizen. You know what I'm saying? Not Roman by ethnicity, but Roman by birth. You know what I'm saying? By you know what I'm saying because he's a citizen, just like a person born in America. You know what I'm saying? So when he saw that, he was like, I gotta give him a little bit more respect. Got to make sure I take care of his rights, because Roman had rights similar to, uh, similar to uh, you know, the stuff that we share in countries right now. It was like one of the first democracies, they say. Yeah, of its type, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so you, you see these things, and you're looking at it, and they're like, okay, you know what I'm saying? This is Paul, Jews trying to get at him, you know what I'm saying? Other people trying to get at him. And then you have uh, the Romans kind of protecting them, like trying to figure it out, because their whole game is to keep peace. They have to make sure that things don't get too out of hand. Right? So Paul started to make speech, speech to his people, books that he spoke in the Hebrew tongue. And they understood them. Even though these liars be telling us they didn't speak Hebrew, they spoke Aramaic. That don't make no darn sense. Right? So he spoke to the people in Hebrew. That's what the books say. Right? He spoke to them and they understood them. And they had gone along with the story he started off with. You know what I'm saying? This is what I used to do to the people of this way and all that. Talking about, talking about the people that believed in Yahushua. He was talking about, man, I persecuted him. Y'all can ask the chief priest. He know me well. I learned at the feet of Gamaliel. He just started laying down all his resume, right? And they were with him. They were like, okay, you know what I'm saying? see what this man talking about. All of a sudden, he told him, and after that, God sent me to the Gentile. They were like, man, we don't want to hear none of that thing. God ain't nothing. Ain't no God sent you to no darn Gentile. That's what our people would think. We were looking like, there's no way he sent you to the Gentile. That don't even make sense to us, right? So they stopped Paul from talking. They had arguments back and forth, back and forth, and then finally he has to go to court, right? So that's, that's somewhere where we are right now. We, uh, we are at uh, Acts chapter 23, verse 11. And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as you have testified of me in Jerusalem, so much you bear witness also at Rome. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying, that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. Look, and look what he said. So we have certain of our people, they was looking at, we're going to fast. We're not going to eat nor are we going to drink until Paul is dead. They made a commitment. Do you think they did that because they're evil? They did it because they think it's the right thing to do. They fast and they say until Paul is dead, 
we will not eat or drink. That's how committed they were to, to serving this man his death. Right? Keep going. And when it was day, certain of the Jews, wait, sorry, and there were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy. There were 40 of them that made that conspiracy. 40, 40 of them behind closed doors decided that this is what they were going to do. 40 of them were conspiring to kill Paul, and until they did that, until they accomplished their mission, they were not going to eat, nor were they going to drink. This is very important to look at the dedication of doing something that we can clearly look at and say it's evil. But can we clearly say that they thought the same thing at the time? It's important to be for us, to, even though we think they believe in the same God that Paul is talking about. Right? Both of, them is, they, both of them will sit down and they say, I believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Paul and, uh, and, and our people, uh, the, the Jews that was after him. Or the 40 that, was that, 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 that vowed to, to fast until they killed him. They all would serve the same God. Right? But we have to ask ourselves, did they know what they were doing were wrong? Right? Or were they convinced that they were doing the right thing? Right? Keep going. And they came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great curse that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, ye with the council signify to the chief captain that he bring him down unto you tomorrow, as though ye would inquire something more perfectly concerning him, and we or ever he came near, are ready to kill him. All right, so he said, go ahead and set him up. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and bring him down here. Act like you got something to say to him. You know what I'm saying? Act like you got some questions. You want to understand what he's talking about. And after that, we're going to get his butt. Right? Bring him down here. All right? We look at this. You, This is what we got to expect as a man of God, as a woman of God. Right? This is what we set for. This is how it all plays out for us. Right, the psalm, the psalm said we, uh, we said we, we every day we kill for his sake, right? Like she, go ahead, and grab uh, Psalm forty-four for me. This is Psalm chapter forty-four. We can go ahead and read the whole thing. I don't think it's that long. This is Psalm chapter forty-four, verse one. We won't be touching the psalm too much, so we can read the whole thing. So far, what we got? John chapter 7, verse 14. I don't know where we went to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then we got uh, Acts chapter 23, verse 11. Probably went to about 13, 14, maybe 15. And then what else? We just come from there. So now we're going to Psalm chapter 44. And go ahead and do the whole thing. Verse 1. It's important that we know this. It's important that we understand that we're aware that we don't get too comfortable. We get, we get comfortable in the believing that, man, what I've been taught, what somebody told me, what my Hebrew teacher told me, you know what I'm saying, well, they, the, the, the Hebrews, they always call them, you know what I'm saying, elders. You know what I'm saying, what my elder taught me, you know what I'm saying, it's like what my elder taught me, I believe it, I rock with it, it makes sense. Right, with the IUCIU or whatever they call it, the IUCC, you know what I'm saying. Whatever they taught me, I think makes sense, right? No with the, uh, with the uh, what's the other one? I don't know. Uh, with, uh, what's the one that uh, the people we know? I don't know. I think they, I don't know. Gathering of Christ, that's what it was. You know what I'm saying? Gather, what is it? Uh, the uh, GLCC. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The no version birth. You know what I'm saying? You got, you got, you got all these people who's like, man, what they taught me, I love, I believe it. It makes sense. But they lay it out, it's gonna make sense. You don't know nothing, everything a darn makes sense. I can say something wild, some stuff in my side right now, and that thing will make sense. You know, if he ain't never seen a color, he don't know what a color look. If I go up to Stevie Wonder right now and I tell him, you know what, red, I pointed some red, you know what I'm saying, it's actually blue. I'd be like, man, that's red. What's Stevie Wonder gonna tell me about it? Oh, that thing gonna make sense to him, yeah, it makes sense. I get to explain it. See, the thing about red, when you look at it, it's the same color as the sky. How you gonna say that thing makes sense to him? He don't know no different. <laughs> he can't see it if ain't nobody told him. Right? So he look at it and be like, yeah, that thing makes sense. When you don't know, everything makes sense. That's where they get us. Because they lay something out, it makes sense. They appeal to something else that we think, just like when these Christians tell you, see, people are wrong when they say God is gonna send you to hell. See, God is our Father. When your son does something and he's upset, you're upset with him. 
Do you kill him? No. You punish him and you remind him what you, what you want him to do and you help him to do it. And that's all true. But where did they go wrong? Man. Is everybody God's child? Can, yeah, comparing themselves to God. Right? And not everybody is God's child. He never makes that claim. He never makes that. Everybody in the world is his child. He never said that. We'll never read that in the book. He separates his children from the others. And he tells you how you can know if you his child or not. You obey the book. You miss that. You're absolutely right. If I obey the book, the most I got is by my side just like I am to my son. Right? Even more so. He told us, he said, he said, if you which one of you, if your son asks you for what, bread? An egg. It wasn't an egg. It said what? It was not an egg. So if your child asks you for an egg, which one of you would give him a serpent? It wasn't an egg. I think it was bread. It wasn't bread. An egg? It was an egg. I don't think it was no egg. It might be an egg. I can't remember where it is. But he said, which one of you, you know what I'm saying, whatever he asked him for, he was like, which one of y'all, you know what I'm saying, if your child asks you for this, you know what I'm saying? Y'all gonna give him a serpent. Right? He asked that question. He said, now if you who are evil uh, hook up your son, don't you know that the most high God will do the same for you? Right? Because he's looking at he's letting you know even more so the most high God to do it. But that's if you his child now. Right? You can read first John chapter three, he'll break down whether you his child or not. He said, he said, if you if 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 uh if you sin. The Most High God don't abide in you. Y'all sure don't abide in you. Luke right? 11. Okay. This is what? Luke 11? Yeah. This is Luke 11 verse what? 12. This is Luke 11 verse 12. Watch what he say here. It's Luke chapter 11 verse 12. Now after that we're going to grab John chapter, uh, 1 John chapter 3 verse 6. Verse 11. This is Luke chapter 11, verse 11. If a son shall ask of, ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Right? So he said, if a son asks you for talk, some, some bread, what you going to do? Give him a stone? That's crazy. My son asked me for some bread, I'm going to give him a stone. He's trying to let the, the context, just to understand what he was trying to get across, he's trying to let us know about prayer, about us seeking God. If we're kind... <laughs> and we obey the Most High God, and we walk orderly in what He asks, then, and we make a request to God, He's saying, if I ask for something good from God, why would God give me something bad? Right? He's trying, he trying to let us know, why would God do that? Would you do it to your son? Let's see. Or if He asks a fish, will He, for a fish, give him a serpent? Right? He said, if I ask him for some fish, am I going to give you a serpent instead? Let's see. Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? He said, or if you ask for an egg, you know what I'm saying, will he offer you a scorpion? If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how he much said, more? Notice what he said. He said, that's what you're doing. You're evil. Right? He called us evil and then he said, that's what we do. Right? So he said, if that's what we do and we evil, he said, then what, what, what do you think? Read it. How much more? He said, how much more? And you being evil know how to good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Mm-hmm. You won. And he was casting out a devil and it was dumb. Right? So we look at these things and he's trying to let us know this is what he do for his children. It's First John chapter 3. Right? Because the Christian look at that. See, that's what I'm trying to explain. This is what they're not trying to explain. Though. They ain't going to touch this one. Not at all. They ain't going to stay as far away as possible from this one. We saw that. That thing make a whole lot of sense. They just tell you that part, and he was like, yeah, man, I make all that sense. Why would, I would never, I mean, if I was God, I would never send my child to hell. So why would God send me to hell if I'm his child? That don't make sense. You know what? I don't think anybody go to hell. Or the more, the more, you know what I'm saying, the more astute of them, they be like, see, the only people that go to hell are the ones that completely reject God. Okay. Let's see what it means to reject God then. It's 1 John chapter 3, I want verse 6. Watch what he say. It's First John, chapter three, the sixth verse. Okay. 
Whosoever abides in him sins not. He said, well, anybody who abides in him, in other words, anybody who stays in him, stays within his protection, stays within his instruction, sins not. Whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. If you do sin, I'm letting you know you haven't seen the man and you don't know the man. You run in your darn mouth. You don't know him and you haven't seen him. I don't care what history you think you have. He said, if you sin him, he said, if you sin, you haven't seen him, nor do you know him. What else? Little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous. He said, don't let anybody trick you into believing something that's not true. He said, if you do righteousness, you righteous. Just like what? Even as he is righteous. He said, even as he is righteous. Talk about Yahushua. So Yahushua is righteous, and if you do righteousness, then you righteous just like Yahushua. Right? What else? He that commits sin is of the devil. He said, if you commit sin, then you're of the devil. In other words, you're from the devil, you're within the devil, you obey the devil, the devil has authority over you. Right? So you ever hear somebody say, they possessed, or they got a demon, or they sold they soul to the devil, all that stuff? That's everybody who sinned. You sinned one time, that's you. That was me too. That was all of us. We sinned, that's what happened. We sold our soul at that point. You ain't got to sign no contract and get a big record contract or get in a big movie or join the Illuminati to sell your soul to the devil. You already sold it when you sinned. Right? Shh. Only thing we can do at that point is get that thing bought back by Yahushua. Yahushua can buy, the, buy our souls back. He's the author of our salvation. That's what we're here for. Right? What else he got to say? You are the devil? For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Right? That's how we get bought back. We sell our soul to the devil by committing any sin. Any sin you name, we sold our soul to the devil to commit it. Right? And now we can get it back. He said he came, the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. That means he buying that butt back. Yeah, he's going to destroy you if you are the devil. Let's hear about it. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. So if you're born of God, that means you don't commit sin. That's period. So how do I know if... Well, let's, I mean, let's just say, if, if, if somebody is born to me, what does that make them? Your son. That makes yeah. my child. Yeah, it makes them your son. Right? Yeah. My two kids, they're born to me. They're my children. That's it. Your two children, they're born to you. That's your children. Right? So we say anybody who what? Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For he said, if you're you born of God, that means if you God's child... You do not commit sin. So now we know who God's children is. No, it's not a big old secret. You know, do it say you've never committed a sin? Does it says, do you, you do not commit sin. That means present tense. I'm not doing no sin. You got to hold that. I mean, I didn't sin today, so I was God's child. And then tomorrow I sinned? Nah. The day you sin, he let you know you didn't know him. So I couldn't have been God's child yesterday. That's how he trapped you. He's trying to let you know if you sin, you never knew him and you never seen him. If you don't sin, you're a child of God. So if I don't sin one day and then sin after that, he's letting you know, oh, you thought you knew him, but you never knew the man. If I don't commit sin and I hold that to the rest of my life, well, that means I was a child of God. That's what we're looking for. Who can stop sinning and last for the rest of their life? That's what he's trying to tell you right here how to identify him. Look at him. Watch what he's to say. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Uh huh. In this, the children of God are manifest. What does manifest mean? Made obvious. Made obvious. He said, in this, the children of God are made manifest, are made obvious. He's saying, this is how you can tell who's a child of God. Is exactly what he just told you. Read it one more time. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loves not his brother. I don't think you can get more clear than that. They're not going to tell you all this, though. They're going to tell you that you God's child. They're going to tell you it don't make sense that God would send his children to hell. This, that, and that. make you feel real good about being a worthless sinner. Make you feel real darn good about it. They're not going to tell you who really who, who God's children are. Technically, what they're saying is true, Right? God would not send his children to hell. That's absolutely true. Right? The part that they catch you up with is they didn't tell you that you're not God's child until you repent from all sin. That's the part that they ain't going to share with you. They ain't going to tell you that 
that in God's eyes, you are a child of the devil. He just told you that. That's why it's important that we come here and we understand the doctrine. Otherwise, people can tell us anything, and we can go for it. What do we know? Nobody taught us the book. Who going to teach us the book? Who opened up the book and taught us? We sat in churches, and they, they rambled on to us, making all these comparisons and metaphors and saying all these lofty words that sound good. But who taught us the book? Who opened up the book and said, this is what it says? This is what it means? It took us from the beginning to the end. And I just picked out the verses. Well, see, uh, Jesus walked out onto the water. And he looked at Peter, and he said, Peter, come on out here. Just keep the faith. Peter didn't keep the faith. Sometimes you need to step out into the water of your job. You need to step out into the water of your finances. This is what they tell us, and now all we get out of it is me. We never learn about the man. We never learn about Yahushua. He died on your cross for you. That's about all we know. He died on the cross for our sin. That ain't true. That's all we know. We think that's the, the name and claim. That's it. That's the claim of fame. That's all it's to know. As long as you know that, you're good. That's what they teach us. They dumbing us down. They don't even know they're doing it. They are dumbed down. That's the reason they've been taught to dumb people down. How you, been, how you teach somebody to dumb somebody down? But that's what they've been taught. They don't know no better. That's what they think it is. We got to turn this stuff around. We got to show a standard to show people just by looking at us, by watching our conduct, by hearing us speak, by watching our action. They see what is required from God. They see in us what God requires. I can't do that. Right? No, you over there, I can't be over there. Right? You having that conversation, I can't have that conversation. Right? I can't speak like that. Right? Everything we do in our conduct has to represent God. Care nothing about what people think about us. Right? We ought to expect it. What's that happen? So now, we go talk to a Christian. What do you think the Christian think about us? They think we evil. They think we need to get them out. We, we legalistic. We need to get out their darn church, running our darn mouths. Right? That's what they think. What you think they thought of Paul? And he came back to Jerusalem preaching all this stuff that's different from what we what we believe. We well, better get your darn butt out of here. That's why he had to go and tell them. He turned out to talk about sin to the Gentiles, and that don't that don't agree with what we thought we understood. Right? This is Psalm chapter 44. I don't agree with what, what we thought we understood. We understood. We didn't expect none of that stuff. What were we looking for? We were looking for the Most High God to come back here in power with the Messiah. You come tell us some Yahweh sure? He the Messiah? He ain't killed nothing, but he got killed? That's the Messiah that we waiting on. It's people to this day right now. It's on this side, baby. You looking for the pacifier? It's on this side. To this day, right now, there's people that don't believe Yahweh should acknowledge that he existed. Acknowledge that the New Testament is about the man, but they don't believe that everything in the New Testament is factual. They believe people misunderstood. And they don't believe that he's the Messiah. They, they, they believe he is the man, right? They don't believe that he's the Messiah. I was having a conversation with them the other day, right? I told Mama to break it down. I ain't going to do it this week. I'll break it down for them. I still want to get through Acts. I'll break it down for him. Is it a Hebrew? Yeah, Hebrew. Hebrew was like, yeah, Yahweh sure. They said, Yahweh sure. They posted on Instagram. Nice picture, too. Yahweh sure ain't the one. I said, y'all yeah, lost your mind. Posted some, some scriptures about how to prove that he ain't the one. You know what I'm saying? They had Ezekiel talking about, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I forget. I forget exactly what. But Ezekiel basically saying that when he come back, Israel going to be brought back together. You know what I'm saying? When the Messiah come, Israel be brought back together. I was like, oh, so that's why you don't feel like you get it. I just asked him one quick question. I was like, just answer me this. So the prophecy in Daniel 9 that says the Messiah would have to be cut off before the sanctuary was destroyed. What is that talking about? What Messiah is that talking about that he has to be cut off, in other words, die, before the sanctuary gets destroyed? That means some, whoever this Messiah is going to be has to die before Israel is brought back together. And why, when Yahushua was asked about, is this the time to restore Israel, why did he respond and say, this ain't none of your darn business. Y'all don't know what times that the Father got. 
I tell you, man, y'all, I can break all this stuff down. All y'all got to do is, all we got to do is listen. The whole book is open to us. He, he offered it all up to, all we got to do is take our time, not jump to too many conclusions too quickly. We've been told a whole bunch of lies. We don't know what direction to go. All we got to do is pay attention. This is uh, Psalm chapter 44. Psalm chapter 44, go ahead and start me at 1. We have heard with our ears, uh -huh. O oh God, our fathers have told us what work you did in their days in the time of old. Mm -hmm. How you did drive out the heathen with your hand and planted them. Uh -huh. How you did afflict the people and cast them out. Mm -hmm. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. But your hand and your arm, in the light of your countenance, because you had favor unto them. That's right. He's talking about when we came into Egypt. We didn't do it by ourselves. Most of our God chased these people off with buzzards and all types of, all types of, not buzzard bees and all types of, uh, all types of other stuff. He chased them people to chase these people off. Right? He is the reason that we gave and came in there. We wouldn't have did that on our own. When he sent the twelve up there, they wasn't darn crazy. They went up there and they, Moses asked, he said, tell them, tell them right there, tell us everything you see. They're like, man, we saw some giants. And they got tall, tall, strong walls. Right? We like grasshoppers in their sight. He said, we can't take it. They weren't crazy when they were talking. They were like they were saying something. We were looking at this stuff today and we were like, I can't believe it. They weren't saying nothing crazy. The only thing, the only factor that they was missing, the Most High God. Right? They forgot that the Most High God just brought them right out of Egypt. Split waters for them. That's what Caleb and, uh, Caleb and uh, Joshua were looking at. Caleb and Joshua were looking at it like, no, nah, we can do it. Most of God said we can get it. We can definitely get it. Right? But if you just look at the situation, you look at it, ain't no way we going to win. Y'all crazy. We ain't going up there. Ain't no way we going to win. And they were right. Without God, there ain't no way they would have won. Right? That's how we have to do this over. That's what Psalm is talking about. Psalm says, you know, you can do it by your power. You can do it by your sword, by your bow. You crazy if you think you did. Alright, most high God put this together. What else we got? You are my king, O God. Command deliverances for Jacob. Uh-huh. Through you we will push down our enemies. Through your name we will tread them under that rise up against us. Uh huh. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. Uh huh. But you have saved us from our enemies and has put them to shame that hated us. In God we boast all the day long and praise your name forever. Mm -hmm. But you have cast off and put us to shame and go not forth with our armies. All right? Look at what he says. So he praised him at first. You see how he started out? He prayed. He was like, yeah, man, you did us some real good. But. Now, you cast us off. You put us to shame. Right? What else? You make us to turn back from the enemy, mm -hmm. and they which hate us spoil for themselves. Uh -huh. You have given us like sheep appointed for meat, and have scattered us among the heathen. Mm -hmm. You sell your people for nothing, mm -hmm. and does not increase your wealth by their price. Mm -hmm. You make us a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and derision to them that are round about us. And what else do you make us? You make us a byword among the heathen, a shaking of the head among the people. He said, we a byword and a shaking of the head. They look at us and shake their darn head. Right? That thing's still happening now. Keep going. My confusion is continually before me, and the shame of my face is covering me. Mm -hmm. For the voice of him that reproach and blasphemes by reason of the enemy and avenger. All this has come upon us, yet have we not forgotten you. Neither have we dealt falsely in your covenant. Uh huh. Our heart is not turned back. Neither have our steps declined from your way. You see what he said? He said, all this you did. All this came against us. We ain't stopped, though. He said, all this negative stuff came against us. These people, they are, our enemies is taking advantage of us. They got the best. We get just going to slaughter. All this happened. We ain't stopped, though. We kept going. We ain't stopped obeying you. We ain't betrayed the covenant. That has to be the heart that we have. Watch this. Keep going. Though thou hast sore broken us in the place of dragons and covered us with the shadow of death, if we have forgotten the name of our God or stretched out our hands to a strange God, shall not God search this out? For he knows the secrets of the heart. So he's going to search it out. He said, he said, if we did something wrong, wouldn't God be able to search it out? Because he knows the secrets of the what? Of the heart. Uh-oh. He said he knows the secrets of the heart. 
Most of God knows what's going on. He's like, man, if we, if we did something wrong, wouldn't God know? Right? You know the secrets of the Lord. What are we going to keep from the man? Let's see. Yea, for your sake are we killed all the day long. He said, for your sake are we killed all the day long. What else? We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Awake, why sleepest thou, O Lord? Arise, cast us not forever, cast us not off forever. Wherefore, why do you hide your face and forget our affliction and our oppression? For our soul is bowed down to the dust, our belly cleaves unto the earth. Arise for our help and redeem us for your mercy's sake. Alright, so we look at this and we see this is the scenario Paul is in. He's like, man, I can't see what I'm gonna stop. I'm getting near sitting here beat up in jail, right? Or bound at least in the castle. What am I going to do, stop? What am I going to do, turn back? No, I got to keep going. Right? And these people sitting here lining them up for the slaughter. Ain't no God behind it. God already told them. Only thing God was in his ear, oh yeah, you're going to have to do this again in Rome. I have look, I just got beat up and I got put in jail. Only thing the most I got to tell me is, yeah, get ready, you're going to have to do this one more time. At the end of it, he's going to die. And this is a glory for us. This is what he rushing to do. He tell them, nah, man, ain't nothing gonna get in my way. Ain't nobody gonna stop me, right? I gotta keep going. Cause he got the attitude, the same thing that we just read in Psalm 44. Gotta keep going, right? No different, let's go to Proverbs chapter 21. Cause this is where we go wrong. Cause we can have that same attitude as Psalm 44 and apply it to the incorrect thing. You see how committed that we was reading, the, the, the man that we was reading in Psalm? You see how committed that message was? Right? It comes to you. Everything's coming against you. You feel like the Most High God lining you up to be slaughtered. And the only thing he's talking about is, I ain't stopped though. Right? I'm still walking in the way. I ain't stopped. Ain't no way it's going to stop me. That's what we look at. But what if we had that attitude thinking that we're doing something right, but it's wrong? That's where the knowledge come in. This is Psalm chapter 21, verse 1. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. He turns it whithersoever he will. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. He said, the Lord every ponders way the hearts. of a man is right in his own eyes. Keep going. But the Lord ponders the hearts. But the Lord ponders what? The hearts. That's the same thing that the psalmist said. The psalmist told us, man, what are we going to do? Man, know the secrets. He's going to search it out. He knows the secrets of the heart. Right? Then he said, every way is right in a man's eye. But the Most High God is the one who ponders the heart. So he's saying, to me, I'm doing the right thing. God is looking at my heart. God is looking at, well, what made you do what you think is right? Right? That's the part that we don't necessarily discern. We don't understand that. Jeremiah tells us that. Jeremiah 17. All right? Jeremiah let us know. We don't necessarily, a lot of people would follow your heart and just do what, do, I mean, what do you feel that you should do in this moment? Right? That's what we do. We follow our hearts. We do these things about what we feel and what we think we should do. What is it based off of, though? Right? Where do we, what's the authority of information? Everything has to have an authority. What's the authority of information that we have? That's what it comes down to. It's Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17, think of... Verse 9. Verse 9. Verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Give me verse 8. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreads out her roots by the river, and shall not see... When heat comes, mm -hmm. but her leaves shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. 
What did he say here? The heart is deceitful above all things. He said the heart is deceitful above all things. So out of all things, this is the most I got talking. He said out of all things, he said the heart is the most deceitful of them. Right? And what else did he say? And desperately wicked. And he said the heart is desperately wicked. So if, the, if you say everything that I do in my eyes, what I'm doing is right. Right? In their eyes, our people, the Hebrews that was after Paul, that made a vow and said, we will not eat or drink until we slay this man. In their eyes, what they were doing was right. Right? But the Most High God is looking at the heart. And the heart is desperately wicked. And it's the most deceitful out of everything. Let's see what else. He said, who can know it? Who can know it? So that means you don't know your heart. So you can run your mouth talking about, oh man, I just know. I mean, I know if my heart is deceitful or not. That's impossible. Books just told you who can know it. You don't know your heart. All you know is this feels like the right thing to do. I understand that what I'm doing is correct. It's the right move. Right? He said, you don't know nothing about what your darn heart is doing. Keep going. I have the Lord search the heart. I try he said, to he do what? I search the heart. Here we go. That same thing. Jeremiah told us too. He searches the heart. And what does he do? I try the reins. And he tries the reins. What is it? What else? Even to give every man according to his ways. He give every man according to his thoughts. And according to the fruit of his doings. And according to what he was thinking about. Right? It's important that we understand. He said, I'm going to give you to you according. I'm searching your heart. You don't even know what's in your heart. Right? But at the end of it, I'm holding you accountable, not for what you were thinking, not for what your mind was on. I'm holding you accountable for what you do. Because your heart is going to lead you to do something. That's why it's important. We don't know our heart, but we're going to follow that for. If the heart is the authority for what we do, or how we make decisions, we got a long road ahead of us. Right? We got a long road to hell. That's how we is. That's how we make our decision. It has to be based off of uh, an authority. And the authority that we choose is the book. Everything we got to do got to be based off of the book. That's how you're not leaning. When the book says lean not on your own understanding, that's how you're not leaning on your own understanding. You sitting there coming up with it, trying to connect dots that's not there, you lean on your own understanding. That thing got to be fleshed out through the book, rightly divided. And to do that, that means you got to be skillful with it. And to be skillful with it, that means you got to obey to understand it. And to obey, that means you got to be temperate. Right? You can't just wake up one day and just say, oh, I think I'm going to do it this way, and the next day do it another way. You got to be strict. It's what I got to do. And then stick with it, with patience. Until the most I got to reveal unto you what's necessary. Then you got to do what you're supposed to do with it. This First 1 Corinthians chapter 6, just so we can understand. Just so we can understand. The man said, I'll give you according to your doings. A lot of people try to make you feel like everything is sin. Every little thought that comes to your head is sin. Every little thing that pop up is a sin. You sin without even knowing it. All this is what these people tell you. All right? I just want you all to be sure. I'll tell you about sin. I ain't, I ain't bad as them. They'll make you feel like everything you darn do is a sin. Then they call us legalistic. All right? I don't, man, I ain't going to tell you no lie. I ain't going to tell you that everything you do is a sin. The book don't say that. The only reason they say it is because they feel like if we say everything you do is a sin, then obviously it's impossible that you can't stop sinning. And therefore, God has saved in somebody, so if it's impossible that everybody can stop sinning, and God saves people, then that means anybody can be saved, whether you sin or not. Right? They feel like it's a cop-out for them. That's not, these people are real smart. Whoever came up with this stuff, they were real smart. You know what it was. Master liar. You know what I'm saying? He came up with this stuff. He, I mean, his stuff real smart, real intricate. He come at you with so many angles. You gotta be, you gotta be sharp to get this. The only way you can get it is the wisdom of the word. Ain't no man's wisdom gonna help you out through this. Yeah, you confused. Listen to darn T.D. Jakes and Oprah. It's First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. Know ye not that the unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God? There's no way, to un the, no way that the unrighteous will inherit the kingdom of God. Impossible. What is that? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters. He told you. <laughs> be not. He just said, be not deceived. When we read 1 John chapter 3, he said, let no man deceive you. In both cases, 
He said, let no man, this first John chapter 3, he said, let no man deceive you. He that is righteous is righteous even as he is righteous. We come over here, he said, don't you know that the unrighteous, right? He that is righteous is righteous just as he is righteous. Then he come back over here, he said, the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Then after that, guess what he said? Be not deceived. It's something that they're trying to tell us here. And they're trying to warn us that this is where the deception is going to come in at. They're trying to make it ex extremely clear. This is where they're going to try to trip you up at. Be not deceived. Pay attention to what I'm telling you. Right? Keep going. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves or mankind. That's a homosexual. Keep going. Nor thieves, uh -huh. nor covetous. Nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. He said, none of them getting in. He said, such were you. Watch what he said. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but are sanctified, but are justified in the name of the Lord Yahushua by the Spirit of our God. Right? So we see what he said. He said, y'all used to be that way, but you were washed. The book ain't trying to tell you that you couldn't ever see it in your entire life. I'm the, to, I'm the Christian to try to make it seem like. See, they trying to make it seem like you just can't ever do nothing wrong. It ain't never what we said. We all done did something wrong. You see, that's what you y'all used to be. But y'all washed. You know what y'all problem is? A lot of these people ain't never been washed. A lot of these people ain't stopped what they're doing. They want to say they clean by the most high God and they get dirty every day. That don't even make no sense. They want to say they delivered and they still drown it. If a, if a lifeguard say, I'm here and I'm going to save you, right? You drown, I'm going to save you. And you say, I'm drowning, I'm drowning. And the lifeguard come and he say, I saved you. Are you still drowning or are you saved? Saved. So if you're sinning and you say, I'm saved, I'm delivered, are you still sinning or are you delivered? Still sinning. And you're a sinner, period. There's no way around it. I mean, simple stuff. We make it complicated. We make it so complicated that when you hear it simple, it's complicated. You're like, no, it's not complicated. It's as simple as can be. Only thing to make it complicated, you stuck to a lie. That's what he said. That's a sin. The things that he just named are sin. All right? That's why this is important for us to understand. It's Romans chapter 3. We're going to try to shoot through this. It's Romans chapter 3, verse 3. It's Romans chapter 3. Verse 3. Sin is the main component. All through the book, that's what it come, that's what it come down to. Adam and Eve came down to sin. Cain and Abel came down to sin. Noah and his sons came down to sin. Right? Building the Tower of Babel came down to sin. He told them to spread out and multiply amongst the earth. A lot of these people are trying to tell you, See, he, they was trying to reach God. It ain't necessarily what they were trying to do. They were trying to build something to the heavens, to the skies. Right? The sin was, they were trying to combine and do it all in one area when the most of the good, most of God already commanded, go out and multiply, spread out and multiply. That was the sin. Do what God tell you to do. Right? It go from there, and we get into Abraham. Right? He did what the Most High God told him. That everything the Most High God gave him as a commandment, he did. Jacob, sin, had to be cast out, had to be converted, had to be forgiven by the angel of God's righteousness. Right? And he comes in. Right? Isaac walked in the way. Right before Jacob. When it came down to his son, there was sin. Right? They turned on their own little brother out of jealousy. Right? When it came to Joseph, he was righteous. He was put in the place to now save the very people that were treacherous against him. Sin. And the Most High God, through his grace, still afforded them comfort. Right? When it came down to our people being stuck there, they got stuck there out of sin. Right? Moses was, was, brought us out, brought us into the king. I mean, brought us into the land. And then what do we do there? We sin. Eventually got taken out of the land. It all comes down, no matter what part of the book you want to land in, it comes down to sin. Whole New Testament. First thing the man say when he started ministry is repent. What is repenting about? Turning from sin. First thing out of his mouth, repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. How are you going to say it's not about sin? 
The whole book is trying to warn you about sin. And they try to make sin a non-issue. They tell you, don't let anyone deceive you. If you righteous, then you righteous. If you do righteousness rather, then you righteous, just like he was righteous. But the part said, no man is righteous. Okay. You keep believing that stuff. No man is righteous. That's why you ain't going to get into the kingdom. How is you going to get into the kingdom? Man said, your righteousness got to exceed that of the Pharisees. Or else you'll know why I see the kingdom. Did I say that or did he see it? Say it. Messiah said. That don't make no sense. Now you're going to say no man is righteous. That's what he told you to do. So you just don't believe a man. But now the brother has to I believe every word. That's crazy then. Then you're insane. You don't believe a book. It's Romans chapter 3 verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. All y'all some liars, and God is the most high God. He's true. Keep going. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, mm -hmm. and might overcome when thou art judged. Mm -hmm. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who takes vengeance? I speak as a man. Uh -huh. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God had more abounded through my lie unto his glory, mm -hmm. why yet am I also judged as a sinner? Right? And this is what the Christians try to come up with. And not, right? If it's impossible for me to stop sinning, how am I going to be judged as a sinner? That's what they're saying. It's like the only reason Jesus came is to die for my sins. Right? Ain't that what they tell? They don't say it like that. I'm going to show you how they say it. I'm going to tell you exactly how they say it. They say it. It's impossible to stop sinning. That's the reason Jesus died. If you could stop sinning, it would be no reason that Jesus needs to die. Right? So now let's, let's just look at what they said and see if they're not saying exactly what Paul is saying it's crazy to say. Say it. Read it again. If the truth of God, for if the truth of God has more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? Uh-huh. And not rather... As we be slanderously reported, uh -huh. some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. Paul just said, anybody who say something like that, your damnation is just. In other words, you, you good to go to hell. You deserve it. Right? He said, that thing ready for you. You good to go to hell. Praise God for that. That's Paul talking. Y'all think I'm crazy. That's Paul talking. He said, your damnation is just. If you sitting here talking about my evil makes God's good come. And you sitting there saying, what do you mean? It's impossible to stop sinning. If we could stop sinning, we wouldn't need Jesus. In other words, my sinning is the reason why Jesus is here. Bless his name. And they got us confused. The book's sitting here telling us the whole time, but nobody is teaching us this stuff. Who's teaching it to us? So we sit here just sinning away. Feeling good about it. Whole time, our damnation is just. And that's book telling us that. That's peaceful Paul telling us that. We crazy, man. There's nothing like that. That's where they say that's the same position the people that's after Paul is at. They trying to kill a man. They willing to fast to kill a man, right? They trying to kill Paul. And the reason is because they think what they're doing is right. Yahushua knew it. They was having arguments. About Yahushua. Not every, a lot of times we like to imagine these people that were trying to kill Yahushua. We like to imagine that. Oh, they knew for sure that he was the Messiah. They were just jealous of him because he was taking away their fame or he was taking away their prestige. That's a lie. That ain't none of the conversation that we read in the book. That's just stuff we made up because it make us feel better. Because we like to make stuff so extreme that's so far away from how we thinking so we feel comfortable in the sin that we commit. Well, it's easy to say, oh, no, these Pharisees were evil like any, in like, unlike any evil we've seen. Because then we can say, they way over there. I'm nowhere near that. It's, it's difficult to be like, oh, they was wrong just like I could possibly be wrong. That thing uncomfortable. You look at the Pharisees, you look at all the, all the people at the time, they was having arguments like, is he the Messiah? Is he Elijah? Is he that prophet? Right? Do we have a demon? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if a demon, can demons cast out demons? Can demons do miracles like this? They were sitting out disputing back and forth like, now I don't really know what we're dealing with here. They didn't know for sure. 
Right? They were still trying to figure the whole thing out. They, they weren't sure about who, who they were dealing with. So we can't act like they were sure. That's what it comes down to. Grab, a, grab a Deuteronomy chapter 13. Matter of fact, before we grab that, grab John chapter 10. Give me about verse uh, 30. Then we're going to get Deuteronomy chapter 13. We're going to start at verse 1. Y'all know me. I like, to, I like to look at it like how it really is. I defend a Pharisee. If I can't defend him, it'll, it'll make, it don't do me any good to sit here and beat it. It's just like when I give people advice. I'm going to give you advice, and, and let's say two people involved. I'm giving you advice. I'm not going to tell you everything that the other person did wrong. Right? That don't make any sense. How does that help us? When you, tell, when you give me advice, tell me what I did wrong. Tell me what I need to change. Tell me what I can do better. That's what I'm going to tell you, what you can do better personally. I ain't going to sit here and well, no, nah, they was wrong when they did that to you. No, nah, they shouldn't have did that. Yeah, no, nah, uh, they should. That ain't, that's not going to help us any. That's not growth. Right? When we look at these things, it's important that we know. When we look at the Pharisees, I want to see. I want to see specifically how can I make the same mistake that the Pharisees made? How, could they, how did they get to where they got? Right? And how, how can I avoid it after that? I ain't sitting there looking at it like, oh, they way different. That's just something like unlike of what I've ever seen in my life. No. I think just like me. I can fall into the same darn trap if I don't obey God. All right? This is uh, John chapter 10. Give me about verse 30. It's John chapter 10, verse 30. I don't know why the tip of my nose itch. But the very tip to me. I and my father are one. Mm-hmm. This is Yahushua talking. He said, I and my father are one. Watch what they respond to. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. So they took up stones again to stone him. Watch this. And Yahushua answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? So Yahushua, he's like, what y'all about to stone me for? He said, all the good works I didn't show you, all these miracles I didn't done, tell me which miracle you going to stone me for. Right? He being a smart alley. They about to stone him. He is like, I and my father are one. Our people... Obviously, we look at that. This man just called himself God. That's crazy. Let's stone this butt. So that's what we're doing. We, the man just called himself God. What else are we going to do? We pick up the stone. Like, okay, I'm about to stone your butt. You call yourself God. Bless me. What else am I supposed to do with you? So then he comes back and be like, okay, so tell me, which miracle? Which miracle did I show you of my father? Which one are y'all going to stone me for? Watch what they say. They ain't crazy. What we what we about to read, these people are not crazy. These people were misguided. They didn't believe the book. They didn't pay attention. They weren't crazy, though. Watch what he said. The Jews answering him, saying, For a good work we stone you not, but for blasph blasphemy, and because that you, being a man, made yourself God. Period. They knew exactly what they were doing. What the book tell them to do? If we read Exodus, we read about the young boy. What was it Ethiopian or uh, Egyptian? The Egyptian. Egyptian son? Yeah, he had, a, he, had a, he had a mom that was a Hebrew, and his pop was Egyptian. And he came and he blasphemed God. And he said, we got to, I don't know, we got to ask God what we're supposed to do with it. What did God say do? Oh. So what are we supposed to do with y'all sure who say, God is me and the Father are one? Talking about God. Well, to get his butt, according to our law, we just didn't understand who we were dealing with. That is the small, you see that small, minute detail? I can, I can think me stoning you is, a, is right. So now we look at, we have to remember in this time period, that it was right, it was appropriate to kill a person who didn't obey the Most High God, in certain, according to the law. Right? As long as they, they broke the law that, that the judgment in the law was death, it was appropriate to kill them. So we look at it because our time, we look at, you can't kill nobody, right? Not legally. You can't kill nobody unless, unless you're a police officer, unless you're in the army or something like that. So our mindset is different. So when we look, we look at uh, 40 men who take a, a vow to not eat or drink until they slay Paul, we look at that automatically evil because they're trying to kill somebody. Killing is a sin. That's different. If, the, if they look at Paul and they say, grab uh, Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. 
I'm going to show y'all exactly the law that they look at that they could justify Paul, ju justify killing Paul if they misunderstand. This is what they're not teaching the people. It's Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give you a sign or a wonder. He said, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and gives you a sign or they give you a wonder. Keep going. And the sign or a wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto you. Saying, he said, and it don't come to pass that they not real. And it Sign or wonder come to pass. He said, and that thing come to pass. That means they did the miracle, and you saw the miracle with your own eyes, right? And it happened. And then what else? And where have he spake unto you, saying, Let us go after other gods which you have not known, and let us serve them. You shall not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proves you. To know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. When they say prove you, say it's a test. That's what it's saying. He said the Lord your God is testing you to see if you really love him. So he said, in other words, what he's saying is, even if there's a prophet, and this, is a, this dude seemed legit, and what he said even come to pass. He said he's going to do a, excuse me, he said he's going to do a miracle and he actually do it, and you see it with your own eyes. He said, even if that happened, if he lead you to some God that you didn't know, he said, you better not hearken to his word. What else you going to do? You shall walk after the uh, you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his, and obey his voice. And you shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt. So now if they're looking at Paul, even though Paul did miracles, right? Even though Paul, a lot of what he said seemed legit. If he's looking at it, they're like, what you talking about ain't leading us to the most high God that we know about. This is not the God of our father. You talking about some other God. You know what I'm saying? You talking about God sending you to Gentile. They ain't got nothing to do with our God. Right? If they misunderstood that, then in their mind, it's absolutely correct to take a vow. Matter of fact, it is imperative to kill this man. This, he has to be slain before he leads our people away from God. That's why they say, I'm going to fast until this man is dead. And they mind what they're doing is a service. Grab, grab John. Grab uh, John, uh, John uh, what is it, 16? John chapter 16, verse 1. Grab John chapter 16, verse 1. Try to get up out of here. This is John chapter 16, verse 1. The things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. These things that I have spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the, out of the synagogues. They're going to put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time comes that whosoever kills you will think that he does God's service. He said the time comes that what? They shall put you out of synagogues, yea, the time comes that whosoever kills you will think that he does God's service. He said, the ones that kill you, they're going to think they're doing something for God. You think Yahushua didn't know? You think they didn't expect this? This is what we have to set our expectation for. Not necessarily that people are going to be killing us, not saying that that's far-fetched. But we have to expect that people will think that they're doing the right thing and it's going to be against us. We have to stop getting in this mindset that these people know that they're evil. They have no idea that they're evil. They think, in all honesty, they think in their eyes they right. That has to be our basis. Our basis has to be we all think we right. What's our authority of thought, period? I 
can show you in the book what I'm doing. Yes, I think I'm right. We all think we right, right? But I can show you in the book. I'm not giving you like my thoughts. It's not like I just came up with something. I can show you what I do, how I live, what I believe in the book. Can you show me in the book and it be consistent throughout the book? No. Right? They won't be able to do it. That's how you get everybody on one page. That's how you, how you put a person in a position to accept or deny. Right? You'll see these people run away from you with that type of stuff. You, get, you start getting specific like that. They don't want to talk no more. I think in an interesting conversation, you, if it's vague and it's all in the air and, and it's just kind of what I think what God is saying and what I think God is doing for my, in my life and what I think God is calling me, that would be a long, drawn-out conversation. People enjoy it. As soon as you start getting specific now, but this is actually what a book say, can you show me what you think in the book? That's when I come say, you know, see, it ain't all about remembering verses and Bible verses. See, that's what, see just because, uh, so she, said, she, said, she said, just because you in a, in a garage don't make you a car. So just because you quote Bible verses don't make you a man of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. It's not just about information. Not just about the information, it's about, you got you know, you just got to have a spirit. You can have a spirit, and not, I know somebody, they ain't got the spirit, I mean, they ain't got, they ain't got no knowledge, they never even picked up the book, but they got the spirit of God. Yep, I bet you they do. I know this Buddhist, he do everything, they always know Buddha. I know this Buddhist, he do everything that the Bible say do. He just don't believe in Jesus. Yep, that means he doing everything the Bible say do. <laughs> I mean, just make a fool out of yourself. But through their language, through their speech, they, they acknowledge that they don't know God. They don't know what they're supposed to be darn doing. That's why it's important for us to get back to teaching the Word. I come here, we come here, we teach, not because it feel good or we look nice or we're all this. It's all about making sure that people have an opportunity to learn the Word, and hopefully men of God will see it and begin to teach the Word and spread the Word. And get it to a point where people don't feel like they're lost. Right now, people will just follow any religion or to, uh, will stay in this vague state of mind like, well, I just feel like God is bigger than religion. And, and I feel like God just understands what's going on. And I feel like God wouldn't do this. And I feel like God, they get into these little vague and minutia places because they're scared to take a pick. They're scared to say, or I'm going to be a Christian, or I'm going to be a Muslim, or I'm going to be a Jew, or I'm going to be a Buddhist, or I'm going to be this, or I'm going to be that, or I'm going to be a Scientologist. They're scared to take a pick, and they're like, all these people say similar things, and they all say to each other wrong. Which one am I supposed to go with? What we do is we try to teach so we can put a rest to all that stuff. It is a ton of information out there, right? But the more people that we have that say, this is the truth, this is the truth, the more the Most High God word them get out there. Right? It's all going to happen on God time. But I ain't about to sit there and chill just because I'm waiting on God to do something special. I'm going to work and let him do something special through the work. If he, if it be his will to do something special through the work. That's what he told us to do. He ain't never told I ain't seen, I ain't seen one Bible where he said chill. Relax. Don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to preaching his word. Never seen it. When it comes to obeying his word. Never seen it. He ain't never seen, you know what, take the day off and obeying the word. Never seen it. Well, I'm going to take some days off. That's crazy. That's a sinner. Right? Let's look at it. Let's go, uh, let's go to, uh, this is uh, Romans chapter 10. I thought we were going to grab Romans chapter 8. This is Romans chapter 10, verse 1. get into it, these people, a lot of us are excited about God. We all been there. All been excited about God. It's important. All right? You learn you a Christian, you know what I'm saying? You learn, learn you a Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? You get excited and all that stuff. All right? You first, you first figure out Islam, somebody teach you about that stuff, you get excited. All of us, man, we, all this stuff, man, we get excited. We learn about this stuff, it feel right, it sounds good. We get excited about it. And make sure when you're excited, make sure that thing is coupled with Truth. Excitement is the energy. Truth is the, the direction you're going. You can't be going real fast nowhere. 
You gotta make sure when you get excited, you going you going towards where, where the truth is gonna lead you. This is Romans chapter ten, verse one. Watch what he say. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Mm -hmm. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. That's what zeal is. It's just an excitement. Right? It's an energy. It's like saying the word, if you look at it, the word and the way it's translated, it's actually like saying on fire. You know how people say hey, on fire for Christ and all these Christians say that? That's what they're talking about. That's zeal. That's exactly what it means. It means you on fire. All right? A lot of people have a zeal for God. They on fire for God. All right? But it's not according to what? Knowledge. They ain't got no knowledge in it. My people die for lack of knowledge is what the book said. for Hosea told us. If we don't have the knowledge to go with the energy, we on fire and we shooting, just going fast. But if we go, if we go, go ahead toward the brick wall or headed toward the cliff, what benefit is it? We have to have the knowledge coupled with the zeal, coupled with the energy. And that's what we're here to do. It's Romans chapter 8, verse 24. All right, we have to have a knowledge coupled with the with the zeal. You got knowledge and no zeal, you ain't gonna last long. All right, you got all the information, but ain't nothing energizing you to keep going. All right, you got you you got the right information, but something come up against you, that thing tough to get past, you gonna give up, even if you have the right information. All right, so you gotta have the, the zeal, and you have the knowledge. Zars, hush, please. You have to have the zeal, and you have to have the knowledge. All right, you have to have the energy to keep going, keep pushing forward, to stand against adversity, and you have to have the knowledge to make sure that you go in the right direction. Otherwise, you'll find yourself in a messy spot. Can't have one without the other. Not and be successful. Not when it comes to the Most High God. That's book. That's not me making this stuff up. The book say. All right? It's Romans chapter 8, verse 24. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. Mm -hmm. For what man, for what a man sees, why does he yet hope for? Don't make sense. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we are. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knows what is in what is the mind of the spirit, mm -hmm. because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. We see it again. God searching the heart. All right? You're not getting you're not getting by with nothing. He's searching that heart. He's searching the same heart that you don't know, because it's desperately wicked, above all things, and deceitful above all things, rather. All right? He said, "Who can know it?" We don't know it, but he's searching it. And what you think he gonna judge us by? What we, what's in our heart? What we do. Book say he gonna judge us by what comes out of the heart, right? What we do. What we do. That's what it all comes down to. Just make sure our conduct is appropriate. If it's not appropriate, we find ourselves in a place of judgment. Watch what he say when we end off here. And we know that all things work together for good. He said all things work together for what? For good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. If you called according to his purpose, right, it all is going to work out for the good. So even though everything is coming against us, even though Paul has 40 men about to kill him, we're going to read next week about how it works out for his good. Right? All things works out for the good. Even if when Paul died, it worked out for his good and for our good. Right? All things work out for the good as long as you call it according to its purpose. Right? You doing your own thing, you call and you ignore the call, that thing ain't working out for your good at all. Right? It's important for us to understand these words and trust the words. That right? thing can be real scary you don't trust the book. It's important for us to trust it. It's about to be some trying times coming on if our understanding of the book is correct. All right? 
it's important that we we ship we 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 have to get into shape. Got to get into shape. We got to be in a position where we can move forward together as one and keep going and build. All right? Cause a whole lot of stuff gonna be towed down. All right? Let's pray out.